Hey students, I'm Cade Boger, Tucker's dad. I'm Brett, Cash's dad. And we're here today to talk to you about the wonderful aspects of aviation. What we have here is a Belanca Super Decathlon. This is a 180 horsepower aerobatic aircraft designed to do every maneuver that you can imagine in the sky. We have uh, two seats, pilot sits in the front and a passenger in the back. And you can do training in this aircraft too. We have uh, a lot of aspects of aviation involved, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So your STEM courses that you're taking in school really apply when you're flying. And it's what we use to keep planes safe strong and efficient. The main thing we're worried about in, in, in flight when we're up in the air is all of the forces, the forces that act on the aircraft and that act on the atmosphere. Four forces are used primarily to make an airplane fly. Those are thrust, drag, weight, and lift. And they work opposite each other and we have to know how to use those in order to make the aircraft take off, climb, descend, and do the maneuvers that we're gonna do. The first force we're gonna talk about is thrust. Thrust comes from an engine in an aircraft like this. We have a four cylinder engine that makes 180 horsepower, which is kind of similar to the engines in your cars, but this one's designed to be air cooled. The air rushing through the front of these holes keeps everything nice and cool. Now, when the engine turns and when I push the power up to full power, this propeller spins very quickly, around 2,600 revolutions per minute. The RPMs increase as we push the power up and the, and the speed of the aircraft will increase. The way that the force is directed to the aircraft is that this propeller blade is actually a wing. It has a very similar design of the wing that holds the aircraft in the air. And when we spin that around in a circle, it creates a force that pulls us forward. That's the force of thrust. After the thrust pulls us through the air, then the next component is lift. So as the wind goes over the wing, it sucks the wing up and the wind coming under the wing pushes the wing up, giving us the lift to rise off the ground. The third force that we're talking about is drag. And drag happens anytime that you're moving through the air. All of the forward surfaces on the aircraft have to be pushed into the air and the air actually pushes back a little bit. And the faster you go, the more the, the air pushes against the aircraft. That's how drag works. So we have to use our thrust to overcome the drag. They work in opposite directions of each other. The wing, the landing gear, the fuselage, everything about this aircraft as it moves through the air actually makes drag. So when you see planes that are designed to go really fast, oftentimes they're very small and pointy. If you see something that's designed to go really slow, they have big wings and a lot of surface area where the wind can touch it. The fourth component is weight. Weight is the forces of gravity pulling the plane to the ground. So we're gonna use the other components to create the lift to combat gravity so we can raise up off the ground. One of the fun things about this plane is it's rated for positive six Gs, negative five Gs, and that's the forces of gravity. So when we're doing aerobatics, we can weigh approximately six times what we weigh. So if I weigh 200 pounds, I'm gonna have 1200 pounds of force exerting on us when we're doing these tight loops. So in the cockpit, I'm gonna have four primary controls that we're gonna be moving. The first one controls the throttle, which is gonna make my forward thrust driven through the propeller. The second control is connected to the stick that I have in my hand. The control stick, when you move it left and right, is going to move the ailerons. The ailerons are attached here at the back of the wing and they vary the amount of lift that the wing makes. If I roll the stick all the way over to the left, this aileron going down is gonna make my plane roll to the left. And that aileron going up is also assisting on the opposite side. They work opposite each other on the ailerons. The other control that's connected to the stick is the elevator. The elevator goes up and down depending on what I want to do with the nose of the aircraft. If I want the nose of the aircraft to come up into a climb, I need to pull back on the stick, cause the elevator to come upwards, the tail to go downward, and the nose to rise. If I want to dive the aircraft, I'll push the stick forward, the elevator goes downward, the nose of the airplane goes downward as well. 
The last control is the rudder control. This is how we control what's called yaw, and we do that with our feet. So this is not connected to the stick or the throttle at all. I have pedals, kind of like a bicycle, up in front of me. If I step on the right pedal, the rudder gets deflected to the right. If I step on the left pedal, it goes to the left. And I use that to control and keep the plane pointed in, in the correct direction. Now let's talk a little bit about the instruments that we're looking at as we fly. When we are in the air, we're gonna have what's called an airspeed indicator. This airspeed indicator starts down here at zero and goes all the way around to 250 miles per hour. The maximum speed we're allowed to go in this airplane is 200 miles per hour. And another important instrument is our altimeter. This is very important to make sure that we are flying at the correct altitude. Right now, sitting on the ground, we're showing 500 feet. It works very much like the hands on a clock. If I wanna to go to 1,500 feet, this small hand will come over and the other hand will go all the way around one time, just like your clock in your classrooms. The next gauge that we're looking at is what's called a turn and slip indicator. This tells me the rate that I'm turning at, and this tells me that I'm pointed in the correct direction. I have an engine gauge, an ammeter, and the radios that we also talk on as well. So this is our briefing stick. It's just a mini replica of the full-sized airplane. And what we do with this is we plan our maneuvers. Now the maneuvers that we do are called figures. When we do a figure, for example, a roll, we have a start and an end for each figure. When we come over to the school and we're gonna show you guys a sequence, that's when we put a lot of figures together to make what's called a sequence or a routine. So what we're gonna show you when we show up is a sequence called Sportsman Power Class. So what that's gonna look like from the beginning, we'll dive for a little bit of airspeed and then we're gonna pull straight up into a maneuver called a Humpty Bump. We go vertical until we start to get very slow we come over the top in a tight loop, and then we come straight back down to the ground building speed. We pull back to level, and that's the end of the first figure. Figure two is just a 45 degree upline. So you know your degrees, here's zero, here's 90. We're gonna go 45 degrees on the upline until we run out of speed. When we get down to about 50 miles an hour, I'm gonna level off, and that'll be the end of figure two. Figure three is a fun one. You'll hear the engine go all the way down to idle and we're gonna do a spin. A spin is a one and a quarter turn spin where the plane is gonna rotate in a downward direction and end up turning away from the audience. After that, we're gonna go vertical again, back up into a hammerhead. The hammerhead goes straight up. We're gonna run all the way out of airspeed, kick the rudder and come straight back down the same line that we went up on. After that, we're going to do what's called a wedge. The wedge goes a vertical up line all the way down into a 45 degree down line on our back. And then we're gonna do a two of four roll on the recovery. One, two, to get the aircraft back upright and then we'll pull back to level. The next figure is called an Immelman turn. This was invented during World War I when the, the aircraft were engaging each other in the air. If they wanted to turn around really quickly, sometimes they would just pull straight over the top and then roll the airplane back upright. The next figure is called a split S, which is just like the opposite of an Immelman. We roll inverted and then pull the aircraft through back to level flight at the bottom. The next one everybody knows is called a loop. All we do is just go 360 degrees all the way around the sky and come back to where we started. The next figure is called a half Cuban. We're gonna do five eighths of a loop, stop, fly downward for just a second, and then roll upward and fly away. And the final maneuver that we're gonna do, or sorry, the second to last maneuver is called a competition turn. This is just a way for us to get turned back around and then we're gonna do what's called an aileron roll. So we'll use our aileron control and roll the aircraft 360 degrees around the longitudinal axis. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about it. Can't wait to see you from the skies.